Well, this is going to be a first. While the content on my channel is relatively varied, there's one area of discussion that I haven't really delved into. Theories. This is mainly because I, as a content creator, prefer to examine what is actually presented to me by the media I consume rather than hypothesize about what could be. However, there's one theory in particular that pops up every now and then. The theory that Twilight Sparkle has Asperger Syndrome, or to use more current medical terminology, Autism Spectrum Disorder, and the reason why it stood out was because of how fundamentally flawed it was. I've been wanting to do this video for almost a year now, and when I made a passing joke at the theory's expense in my 420 video, the questions I got regarding my stance only motivated me even more. So without further ado, let's go over why the theory that Twilight has ASD doesn't work. I'll be using the idea presented in Innuendo Studios' Why Are You So Angry series. The idea is that a good theory should be constructed like a table, an explanation, the tabletop, supported by strong evidence, the legs. If the legs are weak or broken, then the table can't stand. So let's look at some of the common pieces of presented evidence and break down why they don't work. Point number one, Twilight is socially awkward. This is probably the point that I see the most when this theory is brought up. That Twilight's social awkwardness, especially in the first season, is a sign that she could have ASD. But here's the thing. Twilight doesn't have social awkwardness. Her lack of social interaction in the beginning of the series didn't come from awkwardness. It came from disinterest. She didn't socialize with other ponies because she didn't want to. When Pinky throws her welcoming party, Twilight doesn't get awkward or uncomfortable. She easily makes her way through the crowd and shuts herself off in her room. Her problem wasn't that she was bad at socializing, is that she didn't want to socialize, and that is not synonymous with awkwardness. There's a difference between not doing something because you're scared or anxious, and not doing something because you're simply not interested, aka the difference between the beginning of Scaremaster and the end of Scaremaster. Once the show gets going, we see that once Twilight starts wanting to be more social, she adapts to it rather quickly. She actively gets involved in various activities around Ponyville, even in season 1, and while she had her moments of anxiety, they weren't because of social interaction, they were because of other factors like the fear of punishment or a fear of failure. Honestly, if I had to rank the main six on how socially savvy they were, Twilight would be near the top, right behind Rarity, if not tied with her. If any member of the main six has difficulty reading social cues, it's most likely one of these two. Point number two. Twilight has an intense interest in one subject. Unlike the previous point, this is something that we actually see in the show. Twilight is very passionate about books, especially books about magic and magical history. She seems to have a book for just about anything her friends want to know about, and is very enthusiastic about it. This is one of the symptoms for ASD, and under normal circumstances, there could be some ground here. But what throws a wrench into this line of thought is the world that Twilight inhabits. Pony society revolves around everyone having that one thing that they're good at, something they have a passion for and end up pursuing in one way or another. While some special talents are more broad than others, for the most part, pony society is one where it's not only normal to have a passion for one particular subject, it's expected. One could argue that because Twilight's special talent is magic and not books, that her passion in the latter could constitute ASD. But while she does have a love for books of all subjects, her main field of expertise is magic. And many of the ponies that have gotten a significant spotlight have a secondary passion outside of their talent. Rarity is very passionate about fashion, but that's not what her talent is. She uses her passion as an outlet for her talent. So does Pinkie Pie. She loves baking and sweets, but her special talent is party planning. In our world, Twilight's interest in books could be seen as intense, but in a social climate where you're supposed to be talented in a specific field, and many have secondary passions that feed into or work off of those talents, her interest is hardly something that could be considered indicative of ASD. Point number three. Twilight heavily prefers structure and organization. I cannot deny this part of Twilight's character. Her borderline obsession with structure and routine is one of the key aspects of her personality, one that I myself brought up in my character talk video for her a few months back. So, if this assessment of Twilight is correct and it is a symptom of ASD, then what's the issue? Simple. 
a compulsive need for routines and organization isn't exclusive to ASD. This also applies to the previous point about Twilight's intense interest in books, but it's even more applicable here because of how broad of a symptom obsessive compulsive behavior is. In fact, it's so broad that it manifests itself in different forms and can be found in many behavioral and developmental disorders, antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, ADHD, maladaptive dissociation, addiction, and several Several panic disorders all list obsessive compulsive behaviors as one of their symptoms. And let's not forget the big one, obsessive compulsive disorder, the one that this particular symptom is named for. So yes, while this behavior could be a sign of ASD, it's such a common symptom that it could also lead to a plethora of other conclusions, like OCD. It's an inconclusive point. But Sketchy, aren't you on the spectrum? Your point? Well, that would mean that you would know a lot about how it works, and you said that you can relate to Twilight a bit, so wouldn't that mean that she could be on the spectrum too? You're not gonna get annoyed again, are you? For once, no. Because you bring up a very important point. Throughout this video, I hadn't mentioned the fact that I'm on the spectrum, and I did so intentionally, because in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't matter. Having a condition does not make one knowledgeable about how it works and what to do about it. A diabetic doesn't suddenly know how to take their insulin and what foods to avoid. I wasn't magically given the tools to manage my ASD the moment I was diagnosed. I had to learn about it, and by extension myself, just as much as any other person. I had to read books articles, learn coping mechanisms, talk to psychologists, special education teachers, people whose jobs are to study these conditions and help those who have them become more well adjusted. In other words, me saying that I'm on the spectrum wouldn't have made my argument any more valid. The majority of people that I've seen support this theory are people that identify as being on the autism spectrum, and I can somewhat understand why this theory would be attractive to them. As consumers, we find enjoyment in seeing characters with similar traits or problems to our own succeed. It's comforting. It makes us feel better because it gives us a sense that we're not alone, that we're validated. But there is a big difference between identifying with a character that actually has those traits and projecting onto a character that doesn't have them. And that's basically what we're dealing with here. This is not a theory. It's projection. A character that actually has ASD, provided that they're written well, is a great lens into how some people with that condition live, both the good and the bad. But when ASD or any other condition is projected onto a character that doesn't have it, it makes one think that this character is overcoming the struggles that come with it, when in actuality, they never had it to begin with. And that leads to the romanticizing of these conditions as something that's cute or adorkable when it is anything but. It's a topic that really deserves its own video, and maybe I'll cover it one day in the future. I bet it won't come out till 2018. I bet your voice won't stop sounding like an 8 year old by then either. Thanks for watching this video guys, swarm that comment section below or bug me on social media, and consider supporting me through Patreon or PayPal art commissions. Until next time, keep it sketchy folks.